Okay, this is part two of the video uh, describing how feedback affects waveform parameters. In part one, we discovered using the calculations that are still on the screen that the steady state error depends on the gain that I use to um, multiply my error with. And uh, we'd now like to look at some of the other parameters of a waveform that are affected by uh, the gain. So what I will do to demonstrate this is uh, make the steady state error calculations go away and bring up some plots that I've already created that will help us see what the steady state error looks like. So here is a plot. This plot corresponds to a value of k equals 10. So you can see, hopefully, that this value here, the value to which the waveform is asymptotically increasing, is only 0.5. So um, our waveform is asymptotically approaching a steady state value of 0.5, which means that the steady state error will also be 0.5. The rise time, if I go from the 10% to the 90% value of the waveform, I get this time here, which looks like about one second. So the rise time appears to be about one second. The settling time, depending on how you want to define it, I get within about 5%, which would be right here, of the final value, in about one and a half seconds. So the settling time here, if you're uh, hoping to settle within 5%, is one and a half seconds. If you want to settle to within 2%, it looks like it would be close to two seconds. Um, overshoot is zero. My desired value, again, is one. And you can see that I never even get close to one. So for k equals 10, I have a fairly long rise time. I've got a fairly significant steady state error of 0.5. Have an overshoot of zero because I never get close to the value I want to get to. So k equals 10 doesn't seem to be a particularly good um, gain. So let's look then at what happens if I make k equal to 30. Here is the, the plot when k is equal to 30. For those of you that uh, have had some background in dynamic systems, um, k equals 20 is about, a, uh, about the gain that would give you critical damping. So if your goal is to get the system to go up to a particular, or to get the rise time, uh, to be small without any overshoot, that would be the value you use. But in this case, we have k is equal to 30. You can, <coughs> you can see that I asymptotically approach a steady state value here of 0.75. So my steady state error is 0.25 or 1 fourth, which is what we said it should be in the last video. To go from about 5%, um, I'm sorry, 10%, actually 10% would be about here, to 90%, which I guess would be about here. We look at the time it takes to do that now. And you can see that we're looking at about a 
half a second now, approximately. So the steady state error is 0.75. It looks like it settles down to its final value fairly quickly. It might actually be hard to see on this graph, but there is actually a very slight overshoot. And so you've got an overshoot of a maybe 0.02, something like that. Uh, we settle down to within 5% of the final value in perhaps uh, 0.6 seconds, something like that. So you can see that by increasing the gain from 10 to 30, we've reduced the steady state error, we've increased the, or we've decreased the rise time, we've decreased the um, the settling time, and we've introduced just a little bit of overshoot, but our steady state error is still 0.75. So let's see what happens when we go crazy and set k equal to 200. So we want this, we're, we're really going to break down the steady state error. Maybe. So this is the plot with k equal to 200. And you can see that the desired value is 1 and we get to 0.95. So the steady state error is down to 0 0.05, which is what we computed it should be. This distance here is 0 0.05. Let's look at the rise time now. The time to go from 10% up to 90%, and you'll notice we're uh, looking at 90% of the desired value now, since we are actually reaching that desired value, is about what, something a little larger than uh, 0.1 seconds. The settling time is actually now somewhat longer than it was before to settle to within about 5%. Well, actually, maybe maybe we could call this the time it takes to settle to within about 5%. So that is, what, about 0.55 seconds for a settling time. But you can see that the overshoot here is much larger. So the overshoot is 0.22, or 22%. Quite often, overshoot is expected expressed in terms of percentages. So basically um, what we've discovered is that if we have a system where we're using only proportional gain, so I'll quickly redraw the system since I wiped it out before, so where our controller is only a gain and then we have the plant. We have this trade-off between wanting to use a high gain to minimize the steady state error and the fact that the higher the gain gets, the larger our overshoot gets. Uh, our rise times get faster, but we uh, achieve faster rise times at the cost of uh, large overshoots. This is the simple, or a very simple controller. It turns out that you can look at much more complicated controllers, uh, which there may or may not be a separate video on. Uh, the more complicated type is called a PID, which stands for proportional. That's the type of feedback that we have here. Integral, so you also have a term in the controller that depends on the integral of the error, 
that's going into the controller. And D stands for derivative. You also have a term in the controller that stands for the derivative of the error going in. Uh, by using an integral term, you can get rid of the steady state error altogether. But typically, integral terms tend to increase your overshoot. Derivative terms tend to decrease overshoot. But derivative terms are sensitive to noise, because if you take a derivative, you're actually, um, in a sense, creating a high-pass filter. And noise is high-frequency stuff, typically. So this concludes this video. Hopefully, at this point, you have a better understanding of how uh, control systems can affect the waveforms um, of the system.